it's 2023 and I do feel like women are still sort of struggling to find their voice in the world. Um, and, you know, we've obviously made a, a lot of progress, but I just, I do feel like a little dismayed because like when I look at the calendar and I think about that, this is 2023, I'm just, I'm just a little shocked. Welcome back to another episode on Find Joy with Joyen, the podcast that is all about helping you live and lead a life with joy. I'm your host, Joyen Chan, and every Wednesday we are giving you access to the world's best and brightest minds in their fields on our show. Listening as these leaders impart their wisdom, inspiration, and stories to empower you to live joyfully with intention, passion, and purpose and celebrate the struggles and overcome the challenges we may face each day with the tools and insights that we are going to share with you whether you are looking to improve your relationship find your passion learn how to embrace the present moment deepen your spiritual connection or learn the magic of manifestation and law attraction to attract more abundance this podcast is here to guide you every step of the way as your host, I am also challenging myself to dig deeper, to learn and unlearn and write along with you. We are not here to tell you how to live your life because it is your life. But this life is all that we have right now. So my friend, why not live our life to the fullest? So I hope these conversations and stories will guide and inspire you to live your life to your highest potential and a life that you are proud of as you continue to grow and evolve in your own journey. So if you are ready to start living a more passionate, purposeful and joyful life, join us every Wednesday on Find Joy with Joyen for inspirational stories, powerful message, fun conversations and empowering thoughts with me and my special guests and friends. And now without further ado, let's dive into today's episode. Joining us today is a talented artist and writer and musician, a dynamic female who has made her mark in a variety of fields. While she was teaching ESL in China and South Korea, she was also writing travel and music blogs. Her passion for storytelling has led her to create works that are thought-provoking, moving, and inspiring. In addition to her teaching and writing pursuits, she is also an aspiring police officer and her desire to serve and protect her community drives her to pursue a career in law enforcement. When she's not teaching, writing, or training for a future role, she is a gifted musician who has captivated audiences with her powerful performances. She's here today to empower you with her drive, talent, and commitment to making a positive impact in the world. So guys, help me in welcoming the force to be reckoned with, Leon Emma Brave. This episode is sponsored by Get the Law of Attraction. If you have been listening to this podcast, you will know that I am a big believer of the universe and the law of attraction. Get the Law of Attraction is a spiritual and inspirational company that gives you something really good like chocolate chip cookies to feed your soul and your mind every single day. They provide daily Instagram posts and reels on the universe, gratitude, spirituality for your headache life. They also have an educational course on the Law Attraction and Gratitude Journal and their links are in the show notes below. Go to their website and use promo code JOYAN, J-O-Y-A-N when you sign up to get $25 off. Hi, Joanne. Thank you for having me. Uh, I also uh, did a little bit of uh, research on you. Oh, um, what you Yeah, I, I like to know who I'm <laughs> speaking with. Uh, yeah, what was one of the quotes I read? Something about uh, uh, was able to always give joy to others, but unable to give it to herself or, wow. or something like that. But uh, that's that's usually the journey the path yeah. takes is like uh, when you're, you're meant to do something, um, you have difficulties in it in like the beginning chapters of your life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that is why, you know, that was a that was my story and that was the reason why I started this podcast called Find Joy with Joanne because like you said, you know, I I was actually uh struggling with depression uh, just a few years back and I lost myself completely. I didn't know why like 
who am I and why am I here? And I wasn't happy. So this is what I call my show, Find Joy, Joy. And because I want to find joy again, I want to help people because I know I wasn't, I'm, I wasn't the only one and I'm not the only one. So yeah, anyway, this now is about me. I want to know more about you. So tell me my listeners, how did you become a musician? Like, have you always wanted to become a musician when you were still a child or teenager? Was it always your dream? Uh, no, uh, I did. Uh, I wasn't really a, a big dreamer when I was younger, to be honest, like, uh, but I was, um, I did like to escape into a fantasy world. You know, I like to, I like to read books. I like to listen to music. I like to watch films. So, you know, I was, uh, I, I, I like to escape into a fantasy world. Um, and, um, I guess, uh, by consuming all that content, you know, I was also learning about storylines and music and uh, while I was consuming it. So um, I, I started creating it uh, later in life. Um, and I, you know, to be honest, I'm like I'm like really good at creating music, especially like I'm very talented. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I watch I also did my research on you and I watch your YouTube videos and some of your music. I love it. it. It's very unique. You know, it's not the kind of music. So tell me, what is your music all about? How would you describe your style of music? Um, It's evolving. Um, It's definitely evolving. Like uh, when I first got, got started, like I, um, I, uh, I, I usually live in like the inner cities um, which is like American ghettos and American ghettos have a lot of hip hop, rap. Um, and um, uh, so I was experimenting with that because that's what the people are around me were up to and doing. But it's not like I don't I don't really like derogatory um, words uh, because I do agree that words are powerful. And I think as as much as you can, you should try to speak edifying words into the universe um, I also think like one thing about crime um, is I do think there's an element of crime in the inner cities that is due to rap music sort of inspiring toxic behavior and violence. Um, so like one thing I would like to do definitely with music is try to have like more edifying and positive music, like especially if I'm dabbling with hip hop or rap but uh i'm i'm right now i'm not really that interested in hip hop and rap but that's that's sort of what i started with i'm like more interested in edm right now which is like a, 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 it's electronic dance music like i, I kind of want to just like make some party rave songs um and that's that's not really to like spread a, a message or a meaning just to make good uh danceable music well okay because one of, the, one of the questions that I have for you that I want to know is that you just answered my question, I believe. With every you know piece of music that you create, with every song or every relics that you write, is there a message behind? I mean, most of my music is fairly intentional. Like um, uh, there's this, I, I, I'm not sure the original singer, um, but there's that song, It's a Man's World and I Know It's Hard. And it is a man's world. Like almost all fields are dominated by uh, men, yeah. um, and like entertainment, comedy, writing, uh, you know, it's, it's not just like sophisticated jobs that are dominated by men. It's, it's boring jobs that don't make much money that are dominated by men. Like every level of society is dominated by men and that includes music. So, um, you know, like, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to talk about music because, you know, it can change from genre to geography. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, like, especially in the rap, community the music has become very derogatory towards women um it's you know calling them the b word and um like uh I, I don't even like to say these words um like uh and you know like so like back in the 60s like when a man sung a song about a woman he would literally it would be like when a man loves a woman and, and it would be a love song it would be a beautiful song yeah. Um, and nowadays the, the it's like the the music almost incites hate towards women um so i am intentional uh, with music i think uh, when you make music you should be intentional and aware that you're influencing people's thought patterns and processes um and uh, you know so i do make music that to empower women i've made a handful of pieces of music to empower women i would like to make music to encourage less violence but that being said 
I, I don't think all my songs need to just be like a, a message. I, I do want to make music just to dance to, too. Yeah. I love that because you said you you want to you know make music to empower women and that is something that I am um, I'm I'm also passionate about doing as well, and I want to know what is your creative process like like when it when it comes to making a piece of music, where where do you start like do you start with the message or do you start with the the, the I don't know like because I've never done that before so how did you get inspiration? Inspiration comes in a lot of ways, but uh. I think um, uh, they have this saying, does art mimic life or does life mimic art or something like that? And, um, you know, I, you, to be honest, like usually my songs come through uh, my own personal experiences or just observing uh, what is happening to people around me. Like a lot. I have a lot of sisters. I have um I have seven sisters. I'm one of, of seven girls. So I have six sisters. Uh, and, um, um, I like literally like every single one of them was, uh, going through a, a divorce. Like it, it was crazy. Um, and, um, I like, so I was around a lot of women who were breaking up with their husbands just by watching my sisters. Um, and that inspired this song called Puff You, uh, which is really good. Like women, a lot of women like that song. Like I, w I would say that as far as like fan engagement, and crowd engagement and comments and stuff like that. Uh, like probably the song that has like the most feedback from the, the audience, which is is mostly a, a female audience is, is Puff You. And it's a, it's like a breakup song and it's like, like taking control of your life, like after a divorce and that, that, you know, I've never been married um, because I didn't rush into a marriage. Like a lot of women I know, uh, you know, I, I wanna be very careful with my, who I marry. So that that is more just uh, like so some songs I draw off of witnessing what's going on with my friends um, and people think they're about me, but they're actually not. They're about like the people surrounding me. And then, you know, and then there are songs that are about me, uh, like the, you know, things I've struggled with or they're about like the, the kind of person I would want to be in the future. And, you know, and then, you know, some songs have exaggerations in them too like you know not everything is factual it is a piece of art mm. yeah because i know you also have lived in other countries before teaching english right in in china or south korea and how does that affect your work um and your music i wish i was uh bilingual uh but i can only speak like a couple of words of any language um, you know, because I, you, when you teach abroad, you always live in an English bubble. And then like when you, um, do to, it's an excuse, it's an excuse, but you know, learning Chinese is difficult. Um, and then, you know, it, obviously if you're learning a, a new language as an adult, it becomes more difficult. Um, and then, uh, like usually when you're an ESL teacher, it's not encouraged, uh, that you speak, uh, the local language. It's, it's actually usually frowned upon because they want you to only speak English, um, so it's very easy not to learn the language, even though it would be helpful. Um, but I would like to make um, more bilingual songs, um, you know, and then language is kind of beautiful. Like, you know, like Gam uh, Samnida is like how you say thank you. And uh, what is it? Anyang Haseyo, Anyang Haseyo. Like that means uh, peace be with you. Like, so I, I think that's like, like it's interesting to me that Koreans literally say peace be with you uh, like when they're uh, you know greeting each other like that's kind of beautiful mm, yeah and I yeah I think I love the idea of mixing languages together in a song and I'm sure you know a bit of like Korean and Chinese like you just said I, I don't know Korean so but I know what you're saying like Anya say yo this I learned from watching Korean drama so I know you do a lot of things like writing you're also a musician and you are now you know um doing your training for being a police officer in the future and you are doing so many things like pursuing so many passion at the same time so many people they have so many passion right and maybe being an artist and musician at least in my culture it's like people think you're not going to make money out of it you are not going to survive maybe some of my listeners they are having a nine to five job and that is their responsibility right because they need income or they need to feed their family 
But at the same time, they also have a passion. They, they really love, they want to pursue, maybe it's art, maybe it's music, maybe it's some other things. How would you encourage them to really go after their dream? I really have always believed in a valuing, like I believe in responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, a lot of people, especially in America, they're always talking about happiness and happiness and happiness. And I'm like, how about responsibility and doing what you're supposed to do and the right thing and discipline, hard okay. work. Cause you know, happiness is instant gratification. Uh, usually things that make us happy are bad for us. Like, you know, a, a lot of people like to drink, like most societies have heavy drinking cultures, like, uh, like South Korea has a heavy drinking culture. America has a heavy drinking culture. China has a heavy drinking culture in, in drinking all night, hanging out with your friends, uh, probably makes you happy, but it's bad for you. Um, uh, you know, it's bad for your wallet too. Um, yeah. you know, and it's probably bad for your family if you have a wife and kids at home. So like, um, Americans, they love to eat. Um, and I'm sure it makes people happy to eat a whole pizza in the middle of the night. Uh, but it's bad for you. It, it, and like, so I, I, um, I, I believe in responsibility and I've learned that um, the, the more disciplined I, I become, uh, the more I start to like myself and feel like I have in control. And then actually, um, uh, the more I value responsibility, the more it frees me up to be creative because, um, you know, a lot of artists <laughs> will depend on other people to fund their projects or to give them the green light. Yeah. Uh, at some point, I just decided I'm not going to beg for permission uh, to make a song or or I'm just going to uh, pave my own way. Uh, but to do that, you need to have money. Well, how do you have money? Well, you have to be responsible enough to hold a job. Now, I'm uh, actually being a police officer in the area I'm in is going to be a pretty good salary. Um, and, uh, you know, so that alone will give me more freedom to build my my projects like by being responsible in the community not only will i have a good career but i'll actually have more money to fund my projects which will actually give me more creative freedom so it's it's not just as uh i, I would never tell someone to run off to new york and and, and follow their heart no you need to have a plan right. you, you need to be responsible and then also i believe in service i believe in serving my community and and though i love music i absolutely love music um, I also love the idea of creating a safer world uh, for for the the young black community, for the community I am in, for myself, for my children. I would like to have one day, you know, because the violence in America has been becoming increasingly worse um, for decades. And in uh, 2019, which you know, it makes sense that in the the time of the pandemic, it yeah. would like sort of uh, create even more violence, but you know, it's terrible because it created even more violence. Like the, the crime has been completely out of control in America. And I, I am passionate about making a, a safer world because it, me making like some awesome dance song doesn't do me any good if a, a psychopath comes in to the concert and shoots everybody up. And unfortunately in America, that's happened at big music venues. And um, like, I am passionate about security and safety because um, I do think people should be able to have fun maybe go to a rave a dance party and be safe they shouldn't have to worry about crime yeah no i totally get that yeah i appreciate your your perspective as well you're saying you know discipline and responsibility it's not about quitting your job and go to new york and pursue that dream you know and leaving your family behind i'm not saying that but i really love that your perspective because it's so important that yes if you want to pursue a passion yes you still have to have responsibilities you still need to have a plan right you can't just give out everything and but of course it depends on what do you want you know so would you still be making music when you become a police officer in the future oh yeah i'm never going to stop making music i it's a part of my identity mm -hmm. um but you know you see, like it's it's the cooler part of my identity and it's the part of my identity that I can easily share with the world. You know, I can put it in an MP3 file and, you know, I can and I can send it through links. And it's it's the part of me that's very easy, accessible to the world. And it's the part of me that our people are comfortable with, you know, like um, I, I, I also do comedy. Um, and, you know, when I told uh, my audience that I was going to be a police officer, they they basically wanted to throw 
tomatoes at my head. So they went from, you know, liking me, liking my music to, you, you know, because also in America, the police have a very terrible reputation mm. in American society. So it's interesting because I, I, the media is important and I would also like to help uh, change the narrative of the police because Amer America does need police because of the crime. Um, but, you know, the police have sort of also been out of control in America. So like, I'm also like, you know, it, it, to, to be honest, I am passionate about going into a police career because I'm passionate about the world I live in and I, I'm passionate about safety and I am a woman. I, 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 I'm an attractive woman um, and I'm a talented woman um, and, uh, and and I'm a woman who likes music, which puts me sometimes into the nightlife and the nightlife uh, can come with its own uh, security problems. Um, like, so like, you know, just by being a woman and living my life as a woman, I've, I've, you know, I've had my eyes open to the potential dangers around me. And uh, to me, uh, I, for me to empower myself, like, you know, I, I, there's not enough female officers, you know, like, I, you know, I don't want to talk about anything depressing really, but you know, rape is a real thing. You know, the me too movement was a real thing. And there's, there's not enough female police officers for women to feel comfortable with for sex crimes to be taken seriously. Um, and then even in the entertainment industry, the, the, you know, they will uh, trick uh, models and actors and musicians into sex trafficking. It's brilliant because like, uh, like for one, it's a, like, it's, you know, you got yourself a pretty girl, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and, and like literally uh, like, for instance, sex trafficking ring ha rings have millions of dollars. So they will spend a couple thousand to get a girl, a couple to get a girl over to the United States or wherever. Like they will like literally put up like fake entertainment ads uh, and, and they'll, they'll get girls to send like their tapes and stuff like that. And then they'll be like, oh my God, you have the audition, come to New York. And they'll even pay for their ticket. So it seems legit, right? Yeah. And then when they get there, they're in a sex trafficking ring. Um, and and then they're in a foreign country. And 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 you know, they thought they were gonna be, you know, the next whoever. Yeah. Uh, and and you know, they're just and, and now their life is being destroyed. And they're these things like you you can um you can turn a blind eye to them and you and you can go live in a bubble and you can go have fun. And, and, but like, for me, they, they really bother me. They really piss me off and, and I want them to stop because, you know, once I was a young artist and maybe I got into trouble and, and maybe I was smart enough and clever enough that I was able to get myself out of that situation. And the police told me I had gumption. Most girls end up dead, blah, 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 blah. But anyways, like from there, I have a choice, which is I could, I could ignore my responsibilities and go drink and party my butt off, or I could uh, take on my responsibilities and bring some justice to society. That's really brave of you. And I love that it's in your name as well. And I didn't know because, yeah, you know, it's it's happening everywhere, especially here in this part of the world, you know, countries like Thailand or Vietnam, you know, these the world countries is happening, like child trafficking and all that. And it's just very depressing to see that. And there's nothing we can do, really. I mean, I couldn't do anything, you know. The only thing that I could do is to donate. That's all I can do. And so I really want to thank you for doing all that you are doing, for making the world a better and safer place for everyone to live. Because we need more women just like you who step out and to make a to make a stand. Because we need role models, right? Like you said, there are not many women police officers, so we really need more people like you. So I hope this episode will empower more young women to really step out and to protect themselves as well to learn how to protect themselves and is there anything that you are working on right now what are some of the exciting projects that you are currently working on um, or maybe piece of music that you are creating that you can share with us well I am actually working on a children's book called brave brave girls wow um and uh it's uh it's it's a children's book and uh, I, I definitely want to work on female empowerment. Like uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I am a female. And um, I was talking with someone about, you know, I'm also a a, a, a woman of color. Um, but I was talking about so, uh, with someone, and I was like, the the things that kind of affect me the most in society are not this stereotype or that stereotype or me being this ethnicity or that way. It's really that I'm a female, like females 
do get marginalized a lot, even in America, which is, you know, supposed to be one of the, the, uh, you know, the best and most free places to be a woman, you know, like I get sexually harassed a lot at work, which affects my pay because it's awkward when your boss uh, hits on you. You might, and then if you say no, you might get fired. Right. Yeah. Um, like, so it, it's, it's awkward. And then, you know, like, uh, you know, I'm there to get a paycheck. Like, I don't want to have sex with you. And like, I, I, to be honest, I don't think I've ever worked at a company where there wasn't some man hitting on me or even calling me baby. And it's like, you know, yeah. like my name is not baby. Like, come on. Like, and then, you know, sometimes the funny thing is, is like, like, I, I don't know if it's that women are scared or, if, but you know, I, like I remember one time I, I told my female manager that he was making me uncomfortable because he kept calling me baby. And and she was like, well, back in my day, everyone called everyone baby. So I don't see your problem. How about I have a name? And, and, you know, that was, you know, I had a really terrible manager because that, you know, it's work. Like, obviously you should be calling me by name. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I like, you know, so like, but yeah, I definitely have felt marginalized as a woman. Um, and you know, like I do try to like encourage female empowerment in my work and in my life. And even like, just when I was just talking to you, like for one minute, I felt embarrassed to use the R word to embarrassed to talk about rape. And I think that's, uh, you know, that's a problem. Uh, more women should be, uh, you know, the Me Too movement was powerful um, and more women should be able to speak up about the issues they face in society because it, it is a problem. And uh, and it's uh, it's something that, you know, a lot of women experience these things and it's not OK. And it's 2023 and um, and, and like and we should be doing better in humanity. Like I, like sometimes I, I think civilization has stalled. It's like, it's like, I feel like it's delayed. Like, I don't feel like considering it's like the millennium, I feel like we're, we're, we're not as evolved as we should be because we still have issues like racism and sexism. And, and to me, that seems like, like a barbaric, mm -hmm. like uncivilized problem, you know? Yeah. So because I have most of my listeners, they are, they are women and what would you say about that? Because if you could, if you could talk to, let's say, if you could talk to all my female listeners right now, I'm sure we all struggle with the, some of the issues that you just mentioned a minute ago. Maybe it's a confidence issue or self-esteem issue or just being bullied in school, at work, being called names, you know. What would you tell my women listeners right now? Or men, even, you know, how, do you, how would you empower them to take a stand for themselves? I would love being a, a woman. Uh, we live in a very weird time where in America, like it's, I think it's been so hard to be a woman. You know, we have this, this weird movement that they, them, he, she, transgender, trans man movement going on. And, you know, I, I know there are some third sex people, but I don't think that very small minuscule percentage of the population is why we're having this big discussion about gender and changing genders. I think women don't know how to express in an appropriate manner how hard it has been for them to be a woman. And like, of course, maybe you would want to be a man, especially if you're young and, and you've heard you can you can change into a different body. Yeah. Um, but I would love being a woman because uh, like women are awesome. Uh, women have gifts that men don't have. You know, they're very intuitive. They're yeah. very nurturing. They're just what the world uh, needs. But women need to stop being afraid to lead. They need to stop hiding behind men or or, or feeling like their voice isn't worthy of hearing. You know, women do let men bully them. And they also let, and then unfortunately, women bully other women. Um, mm, exactly. But, you know, they, they, they need to stop hiding. They need to lead because women are, are, are very talented and gifted. And they, um, they're nurturers. And, and, you know, what the world needs now is love just look up the Beatles song and women mm -hmm. are very good at that and women are very smart and um and women are very good at looking uh, uh to the left about women care about others more, like more naturally like uh and uh I, I i they just need to lead more but you know they they like they they just you know they're shy they stand in the back um and they they really need to overcome that and they should love being a woman. I, I don't think, I, I think uh, I heard this quote and I think women should take it to heart. Uh, wanting to be a man is a, is a waste of an ambitious woman. 
Wow. You know, like women rock, like they, they really rock. Like they, it, you, first of all, we, we, we do give birth to men. Let's start there. Like, I, I don't know why women are, are like just standing in the background. Like women are awesome. And like my, my first uh, thing I would want women all across the world to know is you're awesome. You should never want to be a man. Like you're awesome. Like you, it's, you know, it's really awesome that you're a woman. We're so gifted and, and we're so pretty and, 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 you know, like, it's just yeah. awesome. Yeah. And even in the, you know, in the, what you call that in entrepreneurship or the business culture where maybe women, we are, we are like business owners. We are entrepreneurs. We are the CEO. There are some women, you know, they are really awesome. They are rocking it. They are, they are the, you know, the CEO of a company. And sometimes because we feel like we have to be like a man so that I can be, you know, I can lead the company. I can start a business. I need to man up. I need to more, be more masculine, right? I need to sell like a man. I need to talk like a man and the wear suit. I need to be more like a man so that I can lead. That people will trust me. Often women have had to model men as yeah. their, uh, their model for success because women haven't been leading but I think it's time that we embrace the femme um, and be leaders because, you know, when I was younger, I, I was a tomboy. And uh, but, you know, one thing that's happened that now that I've gotten older is like, I really want to do my hair and makeup, like really want to be feminine. I, I, I really want to express my feminine nature and not have to have to hide it or to mute it because the femme is fun. The femme is, cre is creative and colorful. And mm -hmm. I want to and, you know, don't get me wrong, pantsuits are are. Yeah. Or, or nice, but so are dresses, you know, so are like flirty skirts, you know, you don't want to wear anything too flirty mm -hmm. because I, I, I don't also want to elicit sexual desires amongst the audience, which is very easy to do. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, so I do believe in taste and class and that you shouldn't show too much leg in the business world. But I also don't think, uh, like if you want to show a little skin, I think you have a right to. And I think, uh, uh, we need to stop letting men define the rules about how women should dress and look. And I think like throughout the years, we've only been really modeling business from men uh, because we haven't had female leaders, but there's always revolutions and changes. And I do think it's time that more femininity is expressed in the business world, because personally, I think girls like doing their hair and makeup, even though there's there's some backlash to it. Like, oh, I don't want to do my hair and makeup. I think girls like looking pretty. I think they like makeup if they were to be honest, even though there's some backlash about it. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with you on that. I think it's more about embracing both sides of ourselves, the masculine side as well as the feminine sides, right? You know, and right now I'm learning to be more feminine um, because somehow I just feel like doesn't really serve me anymore and I want to be more intuitive like you mentioned earlier because family is all about we are very intuitive and I want to tap into that side of me you know that power a lot more I want to leverage that power a lot more so before we wrap out this episode is there anything that you really want to talk about perhaps I didn't ask you or I didn't let you um there's not uh really anything it's too crazy. Like to be honest, I'm uh, I'm kind of glad that we just had more of a general discussion about uh, some women's issues, mm -hmm. um, because you know it doesn't like it, the conversation doesn't always need to be about my projects and in my work, and then also my projects and my work are about like what you know women's issues. Like hopefully empowering women, um, because you know it's 2023, and I do feel like women are still sort of struggling to find their voice in the world. Um, and, you know, we've obviously made a, a lot of progress, but I just, I do feel like a little dismayed because like when I look at the calendar and I think about that, this is 2023, I'm just, I'm just a little shocked. We have people flying to space and yeah, even the, the fact that I'm like connecting with you, like on the phone, like that at this point, like the cell phone here is in zoom is not even like it's nothing in our technological advancements. Like our technological advancements are so vast that it's just like, if you're a man or a woman, it just, it shouldn't really be anything that affects your life, but it still does. And there's still like all kinds of nonsensical expectations about what a man is and what a woman is. And then unfortunately for women, uh, women, you know, they get sort of limited to uh, like their role is to, sort of be the backbone of a man cooking clean for the man and then 
to raise the child, which is like that supportive role. It's just like, just it's gotten twisted because it's kept the woman in the background. Um, and, and also who's to say that, um, also I, 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 you know, I think it's, it's fine if a man is, is leading, like if you're in a traditional family, it's fine if the man is leading, but only if the man is literally, uh, more capable than you. And I think we're, we're living in a society where I, I, I don't necessarily, I don't know, like, I feel like men are devolving. I could be wrong, but like, you know, like they, you know, also like they, they, they're the ones who commit the majority of violent crimes, like over 70% of them. And, um, and, you know, like stuff like that. So like, I, I, I don't know, like, uh, like if men are the leaders, I, it's hard to say that they're not like literally responsible for a lot of the barbaric and heinous things that go on in society. Like, so I, I do think more women should step up, which is what we've been talking about. And uh, I guess like when I, as I, I get off this call with you, that's, that's basically, if you want to know how to find joy, ladies, you're not going to find it in the shadow of a man. You, you have to let your own light shine. Wow, I love that. I love that. That's the, the quote that I'm going to pull out from this episode that you said. Um, that is going to be the quote of this episode. I love that. It's so true. And I love how this conversation started from music, you, you know, your, your background, your music, your passion, and it just turned into woman empowerment and it's something that I didn't expect. And I love it because I'm all about woman empowerment. My listeners know that because I only work with female, mostly females, leaders and entrepreneurs and people who want to, you know, really build their confidence and their business, really want to do their own thing, you know, not being afraid of what society say or what other people say or, you know, their friends and family. That is what I'm passionate about. And I love this conversation so much. So thank you so much again for taking your time out. Where can I send people to you? Um, well, since we haven't been talking about women empowerment, check out my song, Puff You, uh, which is on Apple. It's on Spotify. It's on YouTube. I have music on Pandora. And yeah, I'm pretty easy to find on social media and I'm sure my platform is going to continue to grow. And uh, I, I definitely uh, follow me and, and link up with me and support me uh, because uh, I'm on a journey and uh, I actually do have some incredible content. I also would like to uh, connect with amazing women and men, you know, uh, yeah. as I, I grow. And so hopefully if you find my channel you'll also be able to find and be introduced to some pretty cool people as well so uh thank you for having me on your podcast joanne it was uh, yeah. fun speaking with you yeah thank you so much all right guys ladies and gentlemen i hope you love this episode go follow leon visit her youtube channel itunes make sure you find all the links in the in the show below and go check it out follow her subscribe and send her a message and tell her, you know, thank her for taking taking out her time to be here with us today and sharing so generously. Show up. The world needs you and you need you. Thanks for listening today and I wish you all a joyful and amazing day ahead. Thanks again to our sponsor, Get a Law of Attraction. Follow them on Instagram for daily spiritual enrichment and encouragement, especially if your spiritual ice cream cone is melting a bit, you will get a fresh scoop of your favorite flavor of spiritual encouragement and insights. Find Joy with Joanne listeners will get $25 off when you go to their website and use promo code Joanne, J-O-Y-A-N, when you sign up for their Law Attraction course and Gratitude Journal. Once again, that is Joanne, J-O-Y-A-N, for $25 off, and their links are in the show notes below. Thank you again for tuning to Find Joy with Joanne podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, you can help support this podcast in one of three ways. One, Take a screenshot of this episode and share it on your IG story and tag me at findjoyjoyan underscore podcast so I can repost and connect with you. Two, share this podcast with a friend or a family member. And three, leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts so we can continue to grow and reach more listeners worldwide. Make sure you also subscribe so you don't miss out on any episode coming Wednesday. Thanks for being here and I will see you soon in the next episode.